Elon Musk's trans 18-year-old daughter disowns him completely. So she requested a name change and when uh, where she placed her reasoning, she wrote, I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape, or form. She wrote this in the petition on April 18th. And this is all very interesting. Now, you know, in this channel, I talk a good amount, a good bit about Elon Musk. And, uh, you know, he's recently trying to acquire Twitter. Um, he's this, you know, respected CEO and entrepreneur. And in his own right, I mean, I have so much respect for entrepreneurs and CEOs, especially people, you know, that make it as far as he has made it. So I always have respect for him. But I think w my questioning and sort of when I started paying more attention to him is when he went for this Twitter ac acquisition. And I think about when entrepreneurs are given so much praise and then they sort of push themselves into positions of leadership and abuse power in those positions. And I think, you know, Donald Trump is a, is a great example of that. And some of you might not understand why is it that being involved with Twitter, how does that give him, you know, omnipotence or how does that give him any power? But you have to understand that in the modern landscape that we live in, social media is the, whoever owns social media is, you know, the most powerful people are the most powerful people in the world. So when it comes to, you know, Twitter before it, you know, I think Jack Dorsey only owned like 12%. He didn't own that much. Mark Zuckerberg has, I mean, incredible power. Probably one of the most, if not the most powerful person in the world. If you ask me, Mark Zuckerberg. But he's still heavily policed and regulated, right? And now Elon Musk, he, he has been in pursuit of power. You know, there's one thing to have money and people don't understand that money and power are two separate things. <laughs> the famous scene in Game of Thrones where they broke down that power is power. It's very different. Yes, money gives you proximity to power, but money is not power. Power is power. And I would say that money is probably the thing, the next thing under power, but power is at the top of the hierarchy, really. And so Elon Musk has the money he doesn't quite have the power yet. And it looks like with this Twitter acquisition, he wants to now be in this position that makes him powerful. Now, again, respect him as an entrepreneur. But my thing is, when we see these CEOs trying to take these positions of power, we have to be, I won't say cautious, but I think we have to do our due diligence. I think everyone is just too eager to jump on the Elon Musk bandwagon because, you know, he's rich. And so people just let's, oh, he's rich. So let's trust him with, you know, this power. But <sighs> Elon Musk is all over the news. You know, he backed out of Twitter, his Twitter buyout. He's just had secret. We found out he had secret twins back in November 2021. And his trans daughter has disowned him. Boy, I mean, there's a lot going on with him. And he's a little scandalous. You know what? He's human, just like the rest of us. And what I don't understand is, why do people keep pedestalizing him? Just because he's rich. Just because he owns a business. Let me tell you something. Business shouldn't only be for the rich. Business should be for everyone. And if you guys want to change your life, instead of pedestalizing Elon Musk... You want to change your life, start a business and Taylor Brands can help you with that. Taylor Brands is your one-stop shop to starting a business. You can register your LLC, design your logo and use their exceptional graphic design automation systems for your branding needs. And once you're done, you can build your website, register a free domain, and seamlessly integrate a custom email address through Google Workspace. You can also use their print shop and print merch business cards. But if you don't want to be old school and you don't want to print, use their print shop, you can take advantage of their digital business card. This is a cutting edge company. Definitely go check it out. 
Use my promo code to get 20% off on their plans. Link in description, or you can see the link right here. Let me explain to you why Twitter is so important. We saw what Donald Trump did with uh, Twitter to become the U.S. president. We saw what he, how he used social media as a tool to become the most powerful person in the free world. We saw that. And Twitter was a big tool in that. So now if Elon Musk owns Twitter now, how much power is he going to have, right? He is now the gatekeeper of that power that uh, Donald Trump used as a tool to actually get into power or that force that Donald Trump used as a tool to get into power. So that's the scary thing about, that's the scary thing about Elon taking this position of power and owning Twitter. Uh, that's, that's that. And now, and I think about all the different businesses that he's, he's built and he's going to build and Tesla, great business, you know, nothing, nothing suspicious there. <laughs> SpaceX, interesting stuff, very difficult to accomplish. Uh, he's motivated. That is his mission. He probably will, uh, accomplish, accomplish it. Now, when we start getting into the territory of Neuralink or Neuralace, his company, which is going to put a chip in your brain and going to have sort of like this AI technology that allows like, like if I think something, it just appears in Google. You know what I'm saying? When we start talking about things like that, that's when it starts getting dicey. That's when it starts getting interesting because I'm super excited about about companies like that, but the idea of having a man, one man have that much power over like what is going on in human, in every human's brain that, you know, puts this chip in their brain. Then in addition to that, he owns the social media tool where we tell our thoughts to the world. It's a little too much power in my eyes to give one person and let's now talk about Elon Musk's daughter. Why does this, why is this important? You know, so I think it speaks volumes if a member of your own family is disowning you. Now, yes, on one end, it's about the whole, well, just based on her quote, you know, she wants nothing to do with him. Now we know that she is trans. And so it's one of these boys, um, 18 now. Uh, now a female, um, and Elon Musk did make unfriendly comments about pronouns, but he didn't say anything that was transphobic. He he said he's pro, he's okay with transness. He's just like doesn't like pronouns. Um, and people are, I think, uh, the media is like twisting that to mean something else. That's not what he said. I mean, but it doesn't seem like he's transphobic. We don't know what's going on behind closed door, behind closed doors with his family. We have no idea. But on the surface, he doesn't seem transphobic on the surface. Now, then the question now is, what is it that's going on in his family that his daughter wants to disown him? It's quite extreme. It's quite extreme to disown a parent at 18. You know, you're already 18, you're independent, you don't have to have anything to do with them. Why go the extra step to take legal action to disown your parent and, and write in a document to you know you know your parent is a high profile individual you write that in a document of course some maybe you don't know this maybe you I don't know but this is going to get out in the public as it has why do you go to that extreme length if you really don't just like if you don't like your parents especially at 18 you just maybe stop answering their calls but why go to the extreme of disowning them and saying you want nothing to do with them could it be a thing about his character? But we have to see the full picture here. We have to understand the full story here. When you look at his wife, his ex-wife, correction, she had they, they had a very messy divorce. I saw a, a, a breakdown on TMZ where they talked about them. They had a messy divorce. She apparently was kind of swindled into signing this prenup. You know, he approached her with this document he said it was not a prenup uh and he said but paypal you know paypal want me to sign this you know he owned he's one of the founders of paypal they they told me to give this to you it's not a prenup she signs it 
they get a divorce turns out to be a prenup so i guess she didn't get <laughs> what she wanted out of the divorce now would that make her bitter would that make her bitter and would her that make her raise their five children together they have five children together would that make her raise their five children together sort of would that make her, her brainwash them against elon maybe you know this woman has done a ted talk where she goes into some details about him you know as her husband she goes into some details and uh, she was kind of she was i won't go as far as say she was insulting him but she wasn't being neutral about him and if you could do that on a public platform, what are you doing behind closed doors? What are you telling your sons? You know, so yes, on one side, the mother might have brainwashed her children out of bitterness. That's one thing. But why aren't, why aren't all the other children disowning him? Yes, okay, they're not 18 yet, but you could get an emancipation. Um, and also, there are two of them that are 18, they're twins. Why isn't the other one in disowning his father? So there are a few components here, right? Um, yes, we understand. Like, it's extreme, like, for you to disown his parent, especially one that is the richest man in the world and a mega billionaire. So that means you're going to, you're saying, screw the money. <laughs> screw the money. I, I, I don't need your money. I'm disowning you. So, like, you're going to be probably left off the will, and you're okay with that. Um, the only thing that makes sense to me has to do with the gender identity, you know, like when it comes to like being who you are and somebody, a parent not supporting you in who you authentically believe yourself to be, um, then fine. It makes sense <laughs> that, you know, he said, well, maybe Elon didn't, didn't support him in his trans, her, didn't support her in her transness. And then she then said, well, I want nothing to do with you. That's the only thing that makes sense. And that's what the media is all pointing their hands at. But either way, my thing is, we really don't know, but whether, regardless of his feelings about trans folk or not, or whatever, I think we should be raising our eyebrows towards the, to the fact that this is a man that's being disowned by his own child. There are many other things about him that we should raise our eyebrows about. And why? Because I'm talking about this is about the Twitter acquisition. Him as a businessman, who cares? You know, him as a businessman, who cares? But him trying to own the one of the most public social media platforms that can control the way that we think in the world, that can control who is the next president in, in each country. A platform as powerful as Twitter, having him run that, we should be asking questions about his character. Not that we have any choice. It's Twitter is a business. So it's not that like we have any choice in whether he gets to own it or not. But I just don't think that people should just be <laughs> ready to jump on the bandwagon of Elon Musk because he's a billionaire. I think it's ridiculous. People, you know, people just jump on the bandwagon. Like we saw that happen with Donald Trump. Everyone jumped on the bandwagon of supporting Donald Trump and then he ran for office and we saw what he really thought about, you know, people of color and anyone that's not a white rich man. We saw what he really thought about you, <laughs> you know? And so that's what I'm saying. We don't know these people. Sure, we can respect them in the business world, but that has nothing to do with who they are personally. And if we should trust them with positions of power. That's just my thoughts. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. You're watching Brand Video Pro. <laughs> and I'm going back to my vacation. <laughs> all right. I'll see you after this vacation. I just had to post this video. But I'll see you after this vacation. All right. See you next time. After the vacation. A piece and stream.